How do you feel today after you've been raising these issues for a while, I think, at least since 2021 publicly, and it, it felt like not a lot of people were listening to you, and, and now almost everyone is concentrated on this issue. Do you, do you feel a bit vindicated? Do you feel like it's too little too late? It's definitely uh, a good discussion that we, we started to have. Um, but for an interference that you have heard, as you have heard from uh, many of the witnesses, it's a wide and, and deep issues that's been um, impacting our countries. And I don't believe just one hearing uh, would be able to provide the, the uh, sufficient insight um, to, to uh, how urgent the issue is facing uh, Canada. Um, I would feel um, much better if I can see legislative actions being conducted today rather than um, for the governing uh, for the government to reannounce the fact that they are consulting uh, for a foreign registry three months after three months after they re they already initially announced it uh, in early December they reannounced it again um, so it's time for us to to take uh, action and um, taking the action will also send out a correct message that um, that we not only are watching uh, as a country but we are willing to take uh, the necessary step to protect ourselves. Unfortunately, the inaction itself, it's also sending another signal that uh, we'll continue to dither and uh, procrastinate. That, those town halls that are being conducted, what do you think that's a step that the government should skip right now in terms of delaying the amount of time it's going to take to get a foreign interference registry in place? Well, I think the, the information that we've garnered in, through witnesses and experts uh, in, this, in these hearings have provided sufficient background. Um, and there has been, uh, in the House of uh, Senate, in the, in the Senate House, there has been a, um, a bill that's been proposed and sitting on the, uh, the Senate's floor uh, since February last year. Uh, we definitely could take, that, take a serious look at that and use that as a template and, and start uh, our legislative discussion uh, and also maybe perhaps any amendment to make it more effective. Um, and, and that I know that because uh, Senator Leo Hosakos in Quebec had actually taken my private member bill in 2021 and just uh, introduced it in the House of uh, Senate. Um, and I model my, my bill after what the Australians uh, have enacted uh, in, in their country. And Australia, as we know, uh, share a very close uh, demographic composition as Canada. Uh, but if we are not even willing to do that, uh, it takes the risk of, um, of us being, being seen as weak and uh, provide more opportunities for other countries. Will you run again? If you can tell me when the next election is, I pro perhaps I'll be able to answer your question. But right now, the, the importance is not whether Kenny Chu is running again. The importance is whether Canada, the government of Canada, the leaders in our country would stand up and, and do something to protect ourselves. Uh, if, I, if I run again and yet face similar disinformation, our diaspora community is still open for exploitation um, and manipulation. What good is that? And it is important that we know that the, the diaspora community, ethnic communities, they are the victims here. They have been manipulated and misused. And that's why, you know, we'll, 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 have, to, we'll have to have a continued discussion and also while at the same time um, taking an action. I, th I think legislatively there are many steps and tools that we can provide the law enforcement and uh, we don't have to stop until we have all the solution before we start implementing it. Incrementalism is what I think would be benefited to uh, Canada. Have you also faced any overt threats as well? Uh, we've heard lots of people testify at some of these committees saying they've gotten phone calls in the middle of the night or um, just another form of, of, of threat. Sometimes it's subtle. Have you experienced that as well, especially after putting forward that Ford Agents Registry um, bill? 
Um, not since I became an MP in 2019, before the election, uh, I, I, uh, my house, my home got broken into and things were stolen from my home. Uh, I try to think positive and uh, would not con you know, consider that as a foreign interference per se. Um, but no, since I became a, prime minister, uh, a parliamentarian, I was not uh, experiencing anything overtly. Two thousand nineteen uh, Thanksgiving. What was taken from your home? Um, there's been some uh, personal property, but not much. Um, our family pet, um, a puppy at the time, she ran away, and uh, we were able to uh, find found found her, and um, and reunite with her. So, other than money, other than some properties, we uh, we didn't lose much. Now, who is to tell whether? There's more cynical uh, step that's been taken, but I'd rather not to live in fear. Your rival, Mr. Baines, wouldn't really stop to talk to us, but he did say he won fair and square as he was leaving uh, the hearing today. What, what do you make of that? In 2021 election, it's, it was only 22 months uh, after the last election in, in 2019. And within that 22 months, uh, 23 months, uh, there has been a lot of pandemics. Um, and also, in addition to pandemics, uh, people have also been subjected to a lot of disinformation. Not just in the case of my, uh, what I propose as a private member bill, uh, but also the fact that I supported uh, the, the Uyghur votes uh, in 2019 April, that uh, it fulfilled what the, 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 the treatment of Uyghur Muslims in China fulfills what the UN's define as genocide. Um, so many of the, much of the disinformation has been spread in the Chinese community that I, because of my position on protecting Canada and pointing out uh, as the uh, vice chair of uh, subcommittee of international human rights that, you know, the atrocity that can, uh, China had committed, uh, that I'm anti-China, that I'm hatred of uh, the Chinese race, that I, I'm a traitor of my own race. So all these disinformation, all these hates were permeating the, uh, the uh, airwaves and ethnic media even prior to the election, but it definitely climaxed during the election with um, articles specifically written and circulated in WeChat and WhatsApp. Thanks for your time. Okay. Thank you. Did you get everything for our farm? I did. Good. Sure. Um, Mr. Baines just walked past us, not wanting to address whether or not it's a conflict for him to be on this committee, given who is a witness today. What do you think of that? I, I think that's a question for, for him to answer. You know, the, the questions that we were looking to address today uh, dealt specifically with, um, you know, what the Prime Minister knew and uh, when he knew it and um, what actions uh, he he took in response to the information that he was given uh, with respect to foreign interference in our 2019 and 2021 elections. We've been clear from the very beginning that we're, we're looking for answers for Canadians. That's why we've called for an open, transparent public inquiry. The Liberals have been um, using all of the tools in the toolbox to try and obfuscate and, um, and make sure that Canadians can't get uh, that information in a timely way. The, the filibuster that they've used at the Procedure and House Affairs Committee um, is, is one of those examples to, to try and make sure that Canadians wouldn't hear from uh, you know, the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff and it took significant public pressure and significant pressure from the official opposition Conservatives um, to, be able to, uh, to be able to force um, their hand and, uh, and have Ms. Telford testify in the coming weeks at, at PROC. I want to get back to the public inquiry, but one thing we heard from uh, two of the security intel experts today is um, throwing money at the RCMP to resolve this issue without any sort of guidance or, or a new, uh, new policy on national security is not going to do anything. Um, what do you think the recently announced money should, should go toward? Look, the, the best thing that, that we can have happen first is 
to find out what the, what the situation on the ground is. And um, we don't know uh, what has transpired, um, and we don't know when the Prime Minister was informed about the, the efforts that have been undertaken specifically by the communist dictatorship in Beijing to interfere in our elections. So we need to have a good understanding of, of what's happened so that we know how to address it. And, and um, to your point, throwing money at something when you don't even understand what the problem is, is uh, not going to get the best outcome possible. And, and that's why the government needs to have a public inquiry. Are you concerned by the idea that uh a couple of the experts pointed today toward, you know, the public inquiry may not reveal as much as we wish because of the, the nature of how some of these uh, things need to remain classified. You know, we, we've seen with public inquiries in the past that, you know, the, the judge who would be uh, responsible for an inquiry would be able to access that information and uh, be able to, to uh, attend to the sensitivities of, of, of information to make sure that we don't reveal um, sources and methods for our intelligence uh, apparatus. And, um, and no one's looking to have the opposite happen. No one's looking to compromise the safety or security of our country. And in fact, by being able to provide the level of transparency that an open and public inquiry would provide, it would would um, strengthen our democracy, strengthen Canadians' trust in our institutions, um, and that's why we're going to continue to press the government to do that. Thank you very much. Thanks.